Hello, I'm Noel. This is Antonia from Boxtail Soup Theatre Company. This is another box tail scoop. Where are we this time? Um, obviously, last week we were at the Everyman Theatre in Cheltenham, so we showed you a little bit of the um, the stuff that we were doing there. This week we've been mainly doing admin because our annual report is due. So we've been doing all the finances and all that sort of stuff, and it means that rather than being in the studio this week, we're in our little office. So. That's where we're recording this week's vlog from the office. We thought we would reflect a little bit with you on what we did last week. And I think it's fair to say that we had a great week last week. It was brilliant. Yeah, yeah absolutely brilliant. It was really enjoyable. And also I feel like we did get the kind of thing we wanted. So we, by the time we got to the theatre on Friday, we just had a tiny bit left of the script to go through, didn't we, before we went on to polishing up just a few moments so that we could film them with lighting and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And we'd got through, so we got through the whole of the show very, very roughly and skipping a few of the kind of linking moments because they're going to, I think we mentioned in last week's vlog, although actually I can't quite remember what exactly we showed you of that. That was actually quite a long rambling chat that we, the three of us with Mark as well, had together in the theatre. Yeah, and it, was, so we, it was more than half an hour. Yeah, we wasn't? chopped out little bits to show you, but I think, I can't remember whether we talked about how we were going to use sea shanties, but we are going to use sea shanties within the show to link the, the lands together and we haven't quite written the, the poetry for those yet so we sort no. of skipped ahead with those bits but we did get a rough shape yeah and we even for those bits we, we came up with you know a few ideas of what the picture, picture. might be mm. and that that is really crucial is that it's fantastic to have been able to go through the whole thing and to have kind of an initial idea or a couple of options a couple of pictures for each land um, because it means that when when you come to rehearsals then you know that's a, an amazing place to start yeah, off. Yeah, you've got a starting point rather than you're literally starting from, from, from nothing. Yeah. And I mean, it's safe to say that I think this is definitely one of the hardest stories we've done so far. It was one of the hardest to get to a script stage in the first place. That was really tough. And then it was, it was hard next week. Uh, next week? Oh dear. That's how hard <laughs> it was. It was hard last week because every time you'd solved one picture problem, one problem, um, you're then, you know, two lines later, before you even settled into a scene, practically, you're then solving another relatively epic problem. Yeah. You know, Gulliver arrives in Lilliput to meet these tiny little people. Then he travels to a city where there's a great big palace. Then he yeah. has to drag ships across from one island to another. And this, it's one fire. page after another, yeah. isn't it? You know, it's not like you're, you're, like you say, you're not settled in a place for part of that chapter. You turn the page and it's another, it's another location, mm -hmm. another challenge, another picture, another thing going on. We have a joke in the company where we say there's no time for acting. And uh, I feel like this show is quite a lot like that. I felt like that at the moment, you know. <clears throat> Certainly when you're first getting all these ideas, there's, there's definitely no time, no time for acting, just time for kind of playing really though I think and it was it was a lot of fun you know we certainly banged our heads against the wall a few times but we did actually we managed to break through and get to a point where we definitely had something we were satisfied with for each yeah. of the key moments in the show so for something that is a, as difficult as this I think the the two benefits for last week I mean one doing the research and development in itself is a huge benefit mm. and it is a luxury it is not something that we're always able to do so um you know we were very grateful for the opportunity to to be able to take that time to just explore it um and that means that when we do come to rehearsal that you like you said you know you're starting from something so you're not just banging your head against the wall maybe you're not wasting quite as much time because you've got a starting point the other big benefit last week was obviously you and i were working together and we're also working with mark and um we've worked on enough shows now that we have a very a very familiar, very easy, very quick way of um, of understanding each other, I guess, and of, of kind of knowing what the other one's going to do and, and anticipating where we're going with each idea. And it just means that actually the process of, of coming up with that stuff is a little bit faster than it might be. I mean, I think it's safe to say, however, that we originally had planned the research and development work to have more artists involved, and we were excited yeah. for that prospect because it is always nice to get fresh 
fresh brains on it and fresh ideas and have people who we haven't necessarily worked with before and meet people who have other things to, to offer and obviously because of the um because of covid we had to reduce it significantly because of restrictions in space etc and i think you know as much as because of the restrictions it was useful to have already have a shorthand with the three of us because we had to reduce the whole project down quite considerably but it was nice that when we then got to the theatre because we had a little bit more room we could work with um, we could work with someone who was helping us with lighting and we could work with someone who was also sort of helping us as with some of the photography some of the sort of almost kind of a stage manager type role and that that was that was really special as well to be able to kind of expand just a little bit yes. and it would have been lovely to have had the quantity of people we were supposed to have I oh think. absolutely it would have been amazing but yeah i mean the circumstances changed for everybody quite significantly um, we should probably talk about what we're specifically yeah. going to show now um so <clears throat> we thought we, we were quite diligent about recording everything that we did um for the r d as well because we knew there might be a gap yeah. until we got to the rehearsals and also it's great to have a record of all the ideas that you came up with and everything you tried <coughs> excuse me so what we're going to show you first is a little bit of the kind of the the rehearsal the ideas process coming up with um, one particular moment in the land of Brobdingnag, which is the land of the giants, where Gulliver, who is tiny to them, mm. is forced to perform for money. Um, they, they're sort of dead, dead, dead sort of chorus line. Oh, yeah. Can you pull him up a little more? So he's, he's on the side. Yeah. Oh, you've usually got your arms around the shoulders. <laughs> hey, can you do? Uh, yeah, okay, let's do that. Yeah. Russian dancing. If you do hands on hips and then squatting down. <laughs> he does this. Uh, what do you do? Uh, Legs out. Yeah. That much. And then is there a sense if he like he his energy is gone and we're literally sort of holding, holding him up. twist him into it more and more yeah. kind of and then sort of almost like we pick him up off the like he's being yeah, almost like just, being distorted of the, I don't know. Uh, yeah and then he's just going crazy yeah weird shapes uh, I'm stretching him out a bit yeah and then maybe he gets dumped so you can see there with the little puppet that we have that you can hear us talking it through and sort of saying okay well what would happen if we were to do this where does he need to put his arms to make this particular move work and when you're looking at it uh, you can see that i think certainly at the very beginning of that clip it's pretty rough his arms and legs are all over the place we <coughs> wouldn't put that on stage as it is because it, it looks quite messy really but it's just us kind of figuring figuring it out and it's the first time I think we've put rods on a pu puppet like that yeah in fact I think it was only if you go back in that footage 10 minutes before I was actually cutting yeah, strips we were of wood sticking them on to, mm. to try it out because we talked about it briefly and whether it would give us a sort of sense of separation that he was being manipulated and yeah it's and because so for that particular moment like you say he is actually being abused a little bit isn't he really he's being made to perform and perform and perform and perform until eventually he's so exhausted mm. He actually suffers from exhaustion for a portion of the story and has to be brought back to health. So we, we thought it might be an interesting yeah. idea to have this sense that he is being controlled, but they're slightly more distant from him. And, and it was something that we, we hadn't really tried before. So, so we thought we'd uh, have a little play with it. And then the next clip we'll show you is from when we were actually at the Everyman Theatre in the Irving studio doing the filming. Uh, we have, you'll see in the clip, we've put some lighting onto it. We've uh, set up our kind of prototype uh, set behind and everything. Um, and he, we've choreographed just a little sequence of movements from the ideas that we'd had in the studio beforehand. The lovely thing is you can really see the, the kind of process though of taking those ideas 
and going, okay, we like this, we like this. Mm -hmm. How can we put those together and, and make a little sequence with them? So there is a little sequence that you'll see. And then I think it's safe to say, because we're going to finish on this clip for this week's vlog. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah let's finish on it. So uh, it's safe to say that then after that, that clip is not the finished article, we will then be going into full rehearsals for the production at some point. We don't yet know exactly when that will be and we will then extend that sequence of movements, I would think. And we're gonna, we'll probably get Dan uh, Melrose, our wonderful composer, to extend the, the track. Now we know what we need from it. We'll probably say, oh, we need eight bars of this before we have this particular moment, yeah. etc." To make the music bespoke to the sequence. And obviously it will be in full costume, that little puppet will be dressed fully, etc. And it will be much more polished, I would hope. Yeah. Uh, I mean, as we were saying though that's that brilliant thing about being able to do this we can now go into rehearsal with that as a starting point which is just absolutely brilliant so we hope you enjoy the little clip of uh, our gulliver puppet in a second and if you have enjoyed uh, the vlogs please do like uh, comment subscribe all of those sorts of things thank you so much to our new subscribers again it's lovely we get at least one of you kind of signing up every week pops into our inbox that's lovely glad you're interested <laughs> yeah so we will uh, leave you with that clip and we will see you next week ladies and gentlemen welcome i present for your viewing pleasure the smallest man in brodingdag